Well, I'm still feeling a bit grumpy today. Out on the trek, which is always nice. But there's still no signs of spring. It's not raining at the moment. But I think it probably will. Thank you. Before I get home. But there was an article in the Daily Mirror. For those of you who don't know, it's a newspaper in Britain. And when it comes to weather, they're the prophets of doom. They're always having articles like Britain to be blanketed in snow this weekend. And when you read it, even in their own article, they don't mention snow until the last line of the last paragraph. Where they say, could lead to some snow in the high ground in Scotland. Well, that's hardly Britain being blanketed, is it? Anyway, they wrote an article saying that scientists have said that there's going to be a drought until May. Until the end of May. With water shortages. And as soon as I read it, my heart sank. And I went, oh no, that means it's going to rain every day until the end of May. Because that's what always happens when they have these articles. Last summer, it's a drought, we're all going to die, it's so dry. And from that day on, until, well, now basically, it's raining. Anyway, I'm sure you're bored with me talking about the weather. But there hasn't really been much else to talk about. I mean, I long for the days where we can have some long, hot, sunny weather and I can show you the beautiful scenery around Bridge End. And hopefully this year go a little bit further afield and at the very least go on some new routes. But another thing that annoyed me was I don't even know who it was, Leicester so City Council put an advert up on Facebook telling drivers to give cyclists one and a half metres when they pass them. That's all it was. You can look at it, agree with it, or disagree. But the anti-cycling vitriol was quite amazing. And I've spoken about it before. I do still find it difficult to understand. I mean, I don't like football. No interest in it whatsoever. I don't want to ban football. I don't want to criticise football players. I don't want to take away their football fields. Because it's up to them. And if they like it, a little bit trepidatious about this section because of, as I've said before in Britain we don't do gravel riding we either do ride riding or mud and it has rained and rained and rained and yesterday just for good measure we had torrential rain all day, so I don't know what this path is going to be like. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. 
see, it's quite common for British people to believe that if they do something, it should be compulsory. But if they don't, it should be illegal. I don't really know why. I'm sure there's something that you could delve back in the culture and figure it out, but I don't know what it is. So there's some really nasty anti-cycling vitriol and that unfortunately is very very dangerous because politicians will react not to anything sensible but to anything that they think will win them votes and if they start to find that the anti-cycling feeling is a vote winner they'll put more restrictions on us and worse than that is this unbelievable accident rate we have in Britain and people on this thread make comments like I hate cyclists and that really took me aback and I even commented and I said if you hate a group of people simply because they partake in an activity you don't you've got deep psychological problems but of course they don't hate individual cyclists it's just a culture war like everything in Britain we have the worst government of all time and they are so useless they have absolutely nothing positive to offer so they've decided to turn everything into a culture war Turn people against each other, take the heat off the government. And of course, in order to try and justify the hatred, they have to come up with a reason. I've never been down this path before. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to end up. And one of the most common is cyclists don't pay road tax. And of course, nobody in Britain pays road tax. Road tax was abolished in 1937 and was replaced with vehicle excise duty. And vehicle excise duty was originally proportional to the amount of wear and tear that a vehicle was likely to cause. I don't think I can negotiate this hairpin. Particularly as it's on a serious downhill. I don't think I'll come this way again. So if we were to tax pedal cycles, proportionate to the damage they do to the road we'd be paying something like 50 pence a year and it would be more trouble to collect than it was worth but then some time in the early 21st century they decided to change it to the emissions formula which means cyclists pay nothing because they emit nothing in the same way there are some cars that pay no road tax because their emissions are low 
of course, that's something they like to conveniently forget about when they're telling us how cyclists should be paying road tax. So where you get people who hate bicycles, there's a big danger. There's car drivers who deliberately close past you to show you that they're annoyed with you. And that's a big problem. Because they don't judge very carefully. Huge numbers of cyclists get injured every year. And I just want to come and do this for fun, fitness, whatever. But I don't want to do it being in fear. And the other argument is that cycling should have insurance. Of course most already do, but either way all of this has been going on and I've been hearing about incredible number of accidents, incredible number of accidents involving cyclists and I just started to feel something needs to be done. Wow it's windy today. And then Jeremy Clarkson, who I've always been a big fan of. He of Top Gear fame, wrote an article in the newspaper saying that he hates cyclists. And I just hung my head. I just thought, why? Why would you do that? Anyway, with all of that going on, I went out. I turned left at a roundabout. Rubber cars coming towards me. And a van came past. He couldn't wait for the cars coming towards me. And he overtook so close that it felt like he touched my elbow. It was probably just the airflow, but it was close, really close. And then we got up to the traffic lights and of course I pulled up next to him. He'd gained absolutely nothing. And I pulled up next to him and I shrugged my shoulders as if to say, what was that all about? And he just looked at me and hooted in defiance. At that point, if he'd just put one hand up to say sorry, I would have been fine with it. But it was the defiance that tipped me over the edge. So I submitted the footage to the police. You just do it online and they review it. And decide if anything needs to be done. Didn't hold out much hope, to be honest. Filled in the form, submitted the video clip and they sent back an email a couple of days later saying, but they'd looked at the footage and decided that action does need to be taken. So I felt bad then. And somebody said to me, if he's in a van, probably needs his license for work. But then I thought, no. He could have seriously hurt me. And if you do, if you do rely on your license for work, Don't 
don't do things that jeopardise your licence.